Peace, peace, peace. Stumbling on my words there. Peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing hitman, your humble hip hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo, and you already know what it is, man. You rock with the best. You heard? <laughs> what up, y'all? So I just got into the office. So as y'all can see, I'm back on my bullshit. Back to back to back on my bullshit, on my Brooklyn bullshit too. Eh. <laughs> you heard? So, what I learned from this Brooklyn loan shark, man, I want I gotta tell you guys this story. It's such an interesting story. So I was I was um uh, I wanna say I was like 13 years old. His name was Bradford. A lot of my Crown Heights Brooklyn cats remember Bradford. He had a magenta Cadillac. Only magenta Cadillac in Brooklyn, probably, and shit, probably in New York. And um, one day he said, hey, young blood, what you doing right now? And I was just going to play a little bit of Street Fighter on the video game. And he was like, man, hey, young blood, come, come, come take a ride with me. I was like, all right, cool. So I jump into his magenta Cadillac and we just start driving around, you know, the the neighborhood. And, he, you know, he's schooling me on how to move, you know, in these streets or whatever. I'm a young kid. I'm He's an OG in the game, very respected. So he's schooling me and he was like, I kid you not, ladies and gentlemen, I kid you not. It was, how many of you guys remember that movie, Dead Presidents? You remember that one guy that had the, the bum leg? He had a, you know, he, he had that bad leg and he went into the place and he started beating the guy up for the money. So with his leg, well, it was a very similar situation like that. Um, we went to a place on St. John's between Schenectady and I think Rochester. And he was like, hold on, just stay right here, young blood. So he, he drives, he pulls over to the side and he pops his trunk, right? And mind you, I didn't know he was a loan shark at the time. I just knew he was, you know, he did his thing in the streets. And um, he pulls out this Louisville slugger bat, right? And I'm like, oh shit. I was like, damn, Bradford, get me into some bullshit, man. I'm like, I'm 13 years old. You know, some cats might think it was exciting, but I'm like, all right, let me see what the fuck is. I was like, I gotta, have, I gotta look out for Bradford because I'm with him. I'm in his car. But I really don't want this type of bullshit drama at this time in my life, right? So he he takes out this this Louisville slugger bat and he walks over to the guy that was standing in front of the store and I rolled down the window just a little bit. He had fucking magenta tint on the damn Cadillac. I mean, this dude was like pimp hardcore, right? Pimp daddy. So... I roll it just a little bit so it looks like, you know, the person can't see my face. I can see that person though, right? And he is like, didn't I tell you, give me my motherfucking money, huh? You want me to break your goddamn legs, huh? So I'm like, oh shit, right? So the guy, the guy goes to the back and comes, I guess he must've owned the store or something. He went to the back, grabs this little wad of money, and then he pays the guy. He pays Bradford whatever money he was asking for. He's like, good, man. Don't let that shit happen again. And he comes back. He pops the trunk, puts his Louisville slugger back into the, the trunk and walks back into the car. And he sits right next to me. And I'm like, yo, Bradford, what the fuck? Yo, I thought we were just going cruising. And you shaking motherfuckers down for money. And this is the valuable information that he gave me. He said, young blood, listen to me. I took you with me because I want to show you something. The moment you don't care about something, you cannot expect another person to care about it. Whether it's money, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a, a girl that you're dating, the moment you act like you don't give a shit about it, that next person is going to move in on you. So if Bradford were to act like he don't give a shit about that money. Then the guy would be like, well, I, I pay him when I pay him. Fuck him. I pay him when I feel like it, right? But 
because Bradford was like, hey, I need this money. I need you. To, like, I don't want to do this, but I need you to give me back the money that I loaned you with interest. That put him in a position where he demanded a response that was favorable to whatever situation he was in. I kid you not, ladies and gentlemen, I use that same thing. I've been using that same tactic all my life. In every business I do, whatever business that you're in, if you, the moment you act like that shit don't matter, you don't care, that is when that, that particular department or whatever is in that business starts to spiral down. It starts to spiral down and you will, it will come and bite you in the ass. In business, there is 95% of things that you are doing correctly. You're doing it the way you're supposed to do it. It's that 5% that will bite you in the ass like a pit bull. You have to keep binoculars on for that 5%. You hear me? That 5%, if you can notice that 5% in your business that is not performing at the level that you wanted to, I guarantee you, if you work on getting that, that little 5%, it can make a dramatic difference in your business. I'll give you an example. Let's say you own a restaurant, right? You walk through the restaurant, everything looks great. Everything looks fucking beautiful. The, the floors are clean, mopped. It smells good. The food is hot when it, come, when it gets delivered, all of that good stuff. But there's one damn light bulb that's out. There's one light bulb that's out in the ceiling that nobody else noticed it, but you saw it. And because that one light bulb is out, it throws the perception off on your business. Believe it or not, because they're like, well, if they can't pay attention to detail with that one light bulb, how are they really going to pay attention to the detail for my food or my service? And it just gets translated into that. Look out for that 5% and go after that 5% like a loan shark. You owe me results. You must produce results from this. Take out that Louisville slugger and then beat that 5% until it produces to your favor. And everything else will, will, will work out for you in a tremendous way. Because if you can pay attention to the smallest thing like the 5%, when you look at the whole 95%, it's nothing. It's like, oh shit, I see this, I see that, I see that, I see that. Let's tweak this, let's tweak that. Let's put somebody on this. Let's open up the department for that. Let's close the department for that. You understand what I mean? Sometimes you have to start with the smallest thing first and then you can grow exponentially. So thank you guys. Thank you, uh, Rose, she sent the comment. She said, you, <laughs> you're you a great storyteller in addition to great advice. Edutainment, right? Edutainment. I want to educate and I want to entertain to you guys. Because look, man, if you have this, this melanin, huh? You see how beautiful this skin is? God damn it. Might have to use a little lotion to, to, to really let the melanin shine. You dig? But let me tell you something. If you got melanin, you got rhythm. <laughs> and if you got rhythm, you better be sharing your story in a rhythmic, entertaining way. You better be sharing your story in a whatever it is. If that is your target market, like that's my target market. That's the team I play for. God said, hey, look, if you're going to be born, you're going to you're going to be born into the black team. I was like, let's go. I like that team anyway. That team is cool as shit. So I was born into the, the, the melanated team. Therefore, I must perform and I must see what my people's like. My people are rhythmic people. We think in rhythm. That's why it doesn't matter how bad a situation is. Get that fucking African war drum playing and watch what happens. Right? <laughs> Oh shit, you you bringing up some goddamn spirits up then. Because that's that's how we move. It's not cooning. 
You're not cooning. You're, we can, I don't, you got, some of you guys know what I'm talking about, but before there were battles in, in, in Africa and stuff like that, they would play these African war drums because it would, it would enliven this spirit, this inner spirit of this gladiator, warrior, god-like type of person, and they would fight, and they would fight. Why would they play drums? You ever thought about that? Why would they play drums or any type of instrument to invoke that type of energy, that type of emotion? Like right now, if I were to play some African war drums, a lot of you guys would probably get out your seat and start, you know, you get amped the fuck up and ready to attack the world. We are a rhythmic people. Take that note. Use that. And your people will rock with you. Peace, love, and happiness, and cash flow to all you guys. I love you. Peace.